hello and welcome to the Hooniverse and to a brand new video. Now in this video I'm going to be continuing my Who is the Doctor series by taking a look at the Sixth Doctor's time in the TARDIS. Now firstly if you haven't watched the Who is the Doctor series on my channel before, then there'll be a link to the playlist in the description. These videos are where I give a detailed description of each incarnation's personality and identity, as well as a brief history or timeline of key events over the life of that incarnation. Before I begin, I'd just like to take a moment to thank you all as the channel has recently reached the milestone of 16,000 subscribers. I still can't believe this channel has grown and continues to grow every day. It's incredible and brilliant and I'd just like to say I appreciate everyone who watches the videos, leaves a like, starts a friendly discussion in the comments and of course subscribing. Thank you so much. Let's start the video properly with the sixth incarnation of the Doctor played by Colin Baker who was first seen on screen in the serial titled The Caves of Androzani, which aired on the 26th of March 1984. The story saw the fifth Doctor played by Peter Davison sacrifice himself to a formidable poison so that his companion Perry Brown could live. Colin Baker appeared as the Doctor in the serials broadcast from 1984 to 1986, in seasons 21, 22 and 23. The sixth Doctor's official last story is Time in the Rani, which aired on the 7th of September 1987 as he regenerated into his seventh incarnation. As well as his appearance in the Caves of Androzani, which was part of season 21, the Sixth Doctor also appeared in the 1993 Children Need Special Dimensions in Time, as well as the 50th Anniversary Special, Day of the Doctor. The Doctor had the appearance of a tall man with long curly blonde hair. He looked older than his predecessor, however when the Doctor saw his new face he deemed it an improvement, rid of feckless charm of his past, and instead that of vast intelligence and one with a noble brow. Much like his fourth and fifth incarnations, the Sixth Doctor wore a plain white shirt with red question marks embroidered on the collar and braces adorned with question mark symbols. He took to wear a set of striped yellow trousers and he generally preferred footwear with a pair of orange spats over green ankle boots. Most distinctive of the Sixth Doctor's attire was his patchwork frock coat, which had cuffs the same colour as his trousers and featured patches of red tartan, red, green, pink and maroon felt, peach wool, a woven back piece, check collar and yellow and pink labels. This coat became iconic with the character of this Doctor much like the 4th Doctor's scarf or the 11th Doctor's bow tie. The Doctor also wore a range of waistcoats, oversized bow tie cravats, cat shaped pin badges and fob watches with coloured chains to accompany his patchwork coat, each possessing a different colour scheme and design. On certain occasions this Doctor would also carry a multicoloured umbrella. This Doctor's personality, like his clothing, was very different to that of any he'd had before. The sixth Doctor could be unpredictable, consistently self-absorbed, stubborn, argumentative, moody, melodramatic and arrogant, believing himself greatly superior to anyone he encountered. This was a major change for the character, however beneath his now harsh exterior he was still a passionate and emotional individual willing to help those in need. One of the sixth Doctor's quirks would be to overreact with rage when questioned about his methods, repeating a single word from the criticism often getting louder as each repeat went on. The sixth Doctor was highly deductive, able to understand a situation based on small details that others simply overlooked. He also possessed great mechanical skills, being able to briefly repair the TARDIS's damaged chameleon circuit. The TARDIS is the same one the Doctor had at the very beginning, and the one she travels in today, with the outside and the inside changing to match the Doctor's as they change through time. However, in this instance, the TARDIS itself didn't feature any major changes to its exterior or interior design, with the console room and police box exterior remaining the same as the one used in the Fifth Doctor's run. The only changes worth noting were during the story Attack of the Cybermen, where the Doctor attempted to repair the comedian circuit, leading to the exterior taking the shape of a dresser and an organ. The Sixth Doctor shared his adventures on TV with travelling companions. These were Perry Brown and Mel Bush. So, now that we know what this Doctor was like, how he dressed, who his friends were, and how he liked to travel, let's look at some key events from the sixth Doctor's time in the TARDIS. Spoilers ahead. Whilst on Androzani Minor, both the fifth Doctor and Perry Brown contracted a fatal condition called Spectrox Toxemia. The Doctor gave Perry the only antidote available, saving her at the cost of his own life. He expressed uncertainty as to whether he would regenerate or not, as it felt different this time. However, he managed to regenerate. The Doctor expressed joy at the change, seeing his sixth incarnation as an improvement over the fifth Doctor, who he considered unbecoming. Despite having stabilised physically, he suffered initial personality and mental issues that caused him to lapse into extreme paranoia and violence, even trying to strangle Perry. The Doctor's complete change of personality was shocking for Perry and led to some fracturing moments in their friendship. Now later, the Doctor set out to fix everything wrong with his ageing TARDIS, even succeeding in partially repairing its broken chameleon circuit. Picking up an extraterrestrial signal, he and Perry were drawn into an adventure involving a Cyberman attempt to destroy the Earth with Halley's Comet. 
The Doctor later disconnected the chameleon circuit, causing the TARDIS to resume using its police box exterior. Discovering that the TARDIS was running low on Vitor's Iton 7 crystals, the Doctor travelled to the source of the planet, Varos. While searching for the crystals, the Doctor was nearly forced to participate in deadly games when he attempted to free those trapped in the Punishment Dome, stopping Syl, the greedy mentor who had caused the devolution. The Doctor obtained his required Zeton 7, restoring the TARDIS supply of it. Tracing a time distortion to 19th century England, the Doctor discovered that the Master had teamed up with another renegade Time Lord, the Rani, to aid her experiments in the extraction of the chemical responsible for inducing sleep from human miners. Sabotaging the Rani's TARDIS, the Doctor sent the pair flying through the time vortex while he took back the chemical and cured the miners. After, the Doctor and Perry went on a fishing trip. The Doctor felt time slip his subconscious where he saw a second incarnation get executed. Upon Perry's suggestion to see a Doctor, he went to Space Station Camera to see Joints and Dostari, only for them to find the massacre had occurred there with no signs of life. However, in the service ducks they found Jamie McCrimmon who claimed that the second Doctor had been executed by Sontarans during a battle on board the space station. After letting Jamie rest, the sixth Doctor deduced that the second Doctor's supposed death was an illusion created by the Sontarans. The sixth Doctor used telepathy to track the second Doctor to where he was being held captive, while Dostari tried to isolate the symbolic nuclei in his cells so that the Sontarans could be given the secret to time travel. The Sixth Doctor sabotaged a TARDIS copy that was being developed, and with Perry's help, the Sixth Doctor deceived Shazine into using a faulty prototype TARDIS, and Shazine was killed by molecular disintegration. Now, when the TARDIS became caught in a time corridor oriented from the planet Carfell, the Doctor discovered that Meglon, a human who had become mutated into a half Morlocks hybrid, now ruled the planet. Calling himself the Borad, Meglon was using a device known as the Time Lash to banish his disobedient subject through time. The Doctor found the amulet that powered the Time Lash, preventing Meeglin from mutating Perry into a hideous mutant like himself in order to mate with her and send Meeglin through his own device. The Doctor went to Necros next to pay his respects to his old friend Arthur Stengos, a tranquil response, but discovered that Davros had falsified the news of Stengos' death to lure him to the planet. The Doctor learned that Davros had created a new breed of Imperial Daleks loyal to him alone. The situation was resolved with the arrival of the renegade Daleks who sought to take Davros to Skara for trial. It was after a series of stressful adventures the Doctor decided to take Perry to the planet Rovalox to relax. Soon discovering that Rovalox was Earth, moved thousands of light years from its original position, they would encountered the primitive descendants of humanity and prevented L3 robot Drafro from allowing a black light explosion. The Doctor also met Conman Sabalon Glitz, who explained that Ravalox had been moved to protect the secrets of the higher species from the Andromedan Sleepers. On the planet of Foros Beta, the Doctor encountered Sil, and discovered that he and his fellow mentors were trying to make deals with a savage king named Yokranos, through manipulating his mind. After a failed attempt to probe his mind to see if Time Lord had sent him to intervene on their behalf, the Doctor pretended to be on the mentor's side and helped a scientist named Corozier transplant the mind of Kiv the mentor leader to a deceased mentor. Though the process was successful, Kiv's mind was unable to adjust to a new body, and so Kurosu made plans to have Perry's mind overwritten with Kiv's consciousness, which would kill her in the process. Rushing to her rescue, the Doctor was suddenly influenced by the Time Lords, who put him under their control and forced him to board his TARDIS. The Doctor was transported to a Time Lord ship. The Doctor initially tried to use his status as Lord President to avoid a trial but was informed by the Inquisitor that he had long since been removed from office due to his perpetual absence. Alerted to the fact he was the defendant, the Doctor chose to represent himself in the trial, during which he and his prosecutor, the Valiard, would present events from his life via the Matrix as evidence. The Valiard proceeded to display his recent adventures on Ravalox and Forest Beta. Having been under the effects of partial amnesia due to being taken out of time, the Doctor was unable to defend his actions properly and also suffered an emotional blow when he witnessed what seemed to be Perry's death. The Doctor presented the case for his defence, offering an adventure from his future featuring an Earth woman named Elaine Bush as his companion, where he was forced to destroy an artificial race known as the Vervoids. However, the Verliard seized on this to charge the Doctor for the genocide of the Vervoids, prohibited by Article 7 of the Constitution. The Doctor tried to point out the hole in the Valiards claimed genocide, the Vervoids were artificial in nature and never truly alive to begin with. However, when the Inquisitor pressed the Doctor to provide evidence against the Valiard's claims, the Doctor was surprised at the arrival of both Mel and Glitz, who were brought to act as witnesses, 
Furthering his shock, the Doctor learned that the Master had supplied his aid from inside the Matrix, and that the Valiard was in fact a manifestation of the Doctor's own inner darkness created between his twelfth and final regeneration. Taking advantage of the confusion, the Valiard fled into the Matrix. The Doctor and Glitz followed an ended battle of wits with the Valiard, however the Master intervened with this and tried using the Doctor as bait for his own plot. The Doctor overcame this and then proceeded to find out that the Valiard had prepared a weapon to kill all the Time Lords in the courtroom. The Doctor defeated him and learned that the Valiard falsified some of the evidence with the aid of the High Council in a plot to steal the Doctor's remaining regenerations. Now, To his surprise he learnt Perry had not died, but was now wed to Yurikanos as the Queen. As the populace of Gallifrey reacted to the news of this dishonesty of their High Council, the Doctor left in his TARDIS with Mel. Now, Around this time in this incarnation's life, the Doctor teamed up with all of his other incarnations to save Gallifrey from destruction at the end of the last Great Time War. However, they were soon caught in a barrage of laser fire made of focused radiation beams. Now, Due to complications outside of the show, the sixth Doctor's regeneration was a bit of a mess, so I'm going to use the idea put forward in the audio story depicting his demise. So, as the ship was struck and jolted repeatedly, the radiation caused Mel to lose consciousness, but the Doctor feared that he would fare far worse. Unable to tell Mel before she passed out, the Doctor revealed that the radiation was fatal to Time Lords and fell over onto the floor. Weakened by the attack, the Doctor made peace with the idea his time had come, fearing that he might fail to regenerate once again. However, as he lay dying, a figure appeared to him and told him it was far from being all over. The Doctor wondered who it was as regenerative energy began to flow out of him and the TARDIS was snared by a tractor beam and forced to land on La Carata. The Rani and her Tertrap servant Yurak invaded the TARDIS and Yurak was ordered to leave Mel behind and take the Doctor to the Rani's laboratory. As Yurak rolled the Doctor onto his back in preparation to take him away, the final stages of his regeneration commenced and he transformed into a seventh incarnation played by Sylvester McCoy. And that is a brief timeline of the sixth Doctor, known to many as the arrogant, bad-mannered and egotistical Doctor, who came at a time when the show needed a breath of fresh air. The sixth Doctor isn't all bad, and as a character he does really care, he just hides it well, and his adventures on TV were hit and miss on many occasions. However, his audio stories are definitely worth checking out. There are plenty more adventures, companions and monsters to check out, but too many to list in this video. Sorry for the delay with this video, I've recently received a promotion at work and I'm currently busy training to be a manager, so lots of paperwork, long hours and cups of coffee. I'm working on my days off more often than not, so my job essentially consumes my entire life. Don't worry though, I'm still working away making videos where I can, dreaming up ideas for new projects and making artwork on Twitter. With all that said, this was Who is the Sixth Doctor, I hope you enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video, bye bye.